Welcome GMB pros. Welcome everybody that's on the live watching. Those that are on the live here on Zoom, I appreciate everyone. Those that are catching the replay, I appreciate you. As you guys know, William and I's goal for GMB pros is two things. One is to bring guests on here to give you over the shoulder, to give you like, what does it look like? How, uh, what does it look like or what you're talking about? Like, I know I hear you talking, I hear people talking, but what does that look like to help my agency grow or help get results for your clients, right? So I appreciate everyone on here. Um, I think it's, we have a great guest today on something. We were just talking a little bit before um, we hit record here that everything, everything, guys, I don't care what platform you're on, starts with content, right? It starts with keyword research and then combining that, right? LSI, variations, entity keywords, and giving Google and having some conversion factor on your website and so it ranks, so it gets traffic, right? And, you know, there's a lot of tools that are out there that I think you can leverage to get some of this stuff done, right? So our friend and our guest today, uh, a lot of you know him, Matt Zimmerman, right? He is the most friendliest guy, I'm telling you, out of all the guests, guys, I have probably over a hundred of these uh, Zoom uh, calls, GMB pros, probably with uh with uh, William, he, he probably has thousands combined by now. Matt, I'm telling you guys, he is the most friendly and well-known person I know. So Matt was, um, you know, he said, hey, get on your, you know, with your groups and different people. Let's see, bring on prompts to help, you know, I'll, I'll improve them live, right? And I said, awesome. So I did that. I went out, different groups, different um you know, Facebook groups, training groups, and the the like the wave, the majority, and I did get some tips, and they're all along the same lines of what we talked about, Matt, like, you know, how to improve uh, existing websites, new websites, you know, and then how does that process looks like, but what I wanted to say with that story is every groups like oh yeah i know matt i talk to him daily i talk to him daily or he helped me out with this project like he must be the nicest and the most well-known guest i've ever had hands down so with that said matt how are you man how's it going <laughs> i'm doing <Yeah>. great <laughs> awesome, thanks awesome. for having me on i really appreciate it yeah yeah thank you for for coming on here um super excited you know to, to see what we have uh, for our guests and those that are catching the replay. But before we get started, Matt, if you can kind of take us through your journey kind of in the past, you know, I know you mentioned a little bit earlier, but if you can kind of take us how you got started in this whole marketing, whole, you know, program, AI writing, kind of take us to how you got to this point now. It's, you know, I wish I could say it was just luck and stuff like that, but it's, you know, you, you put in, you do a lot of stuff, you know, and you, you know where you want to be, like you want to be in a, in this area. You, I, I always wanted to be in the marketing area, um, but I didn't know, you know, where, where I'd end up, but you know, you just do stuff throughout your life and, and you just keep plugging away at it. And eventually all the skills that you've, you've picked up, you, you find a way to apply. And so I, you know, I got into SEO uh, about nine years ago and, you know, making different sites and stuff like that. And I'm, you know, putting my, you know, clocking in and putting my hours in and stuff like that, getting my notches on my belt. And, um, you know, AI came out and it, it made things a lot easier, but I was just fed up with all the different interfaces and things like that. I thought, you know, I, I want to just use AI where I want to use AI, you know? And so I started tinkering around on a Mac actually. And, um, I was able to tap into OpenAI's API on a Mac and use it there. And I'm like, well, you know, I can't really package this up. Let me see, you know, what programming languages I know. I didn't know a lot. And I knew something that I could apply it with uh, on the PC. And so we made like the first iteration of Zimwriter, which is essentially just using AI, like magic commands anywhere. And then, you know, people are like, hey, you know, can we write articles? I'm like, well, yeah, what, you know, why not? So we made a, a writer. Can we write? Lots of articles. Okay, let's make a bulk writer. 
can we put some keywords in? Well, no, that's impossible. I always say like, no, no, I can't do it. And then like, I think about it for a few minutes. I'm like, yeah, we, we could probably do that. And so it just morphs and morphs over time. And and now it's, um, the code is an absolute mess, but, but I know where stuff is, you know, and I can keep adding to it and it's fun. It's just great. People have these great ideas. Like, honestly, a lot of the ideas are from the community. They're, you know, they're like, you know, we really want to do this. And, and I think about it for a little bit and we figure out a way to implement it. And, um, and then it just kind of morphs into a new feature or something like that. So the journey's been great, but uh, you know it's been hard. Long, long hours, lots of energy drinks. I'm still part time at my full time job, so this is not. I, I have not. I'm not like uh, Jasper. What are they? Is it Jasper or Jarvis? I don't know what they're called anymore. You know, but I don't have like a billion dollars in the bank where I'm like retired and have a whole team. No, I'm. I got a family, and I, I put my twenty hours at my normal job in. Do Zim Writer on the side, and it's just a lot of fun. Love it, man. That's a great story. That's a great story. Now, um, if we can back up, so you want, what made you choose marketing? You know, I liked to, uh, all of my, my dad's side of the family, they're all like entrepreneurs. They're all doing stuff. Like I'm excited in, in about a month or two, I'm going to go to Phoenix for an SEO conference and I'm going to see my, um, my uncle. And he actually, he, he, was able to find grain from ancient Egypt, like seeds, and then hired, um, I guess, leased land from farmers and had the farmers plant the grain. And then he bought a mill from Italy and they, they brought the mill in. Like this is one of those old stone mills, you know? And now they're they're grinding grain and making flour. It's called Hayden flour mills, you know? And it's, it's so, and that's just an example, but they're all like entrepreneurs. So maybe it's just in my blood, but I wanted to make something, you know, and, and marketing, you get to make, you get to make stuff, whether it's, you know, courses or, or software products or, or, you know, communities or something like that. It's just fun to make stuff. Absolutely. So guys, kind of like what I wanted to paint the picture is Matt, it's just like one of us, right? Like you heard him say this part-time job, you know, he just wants to make an impact you know, create something great. And Zim Writer, like I, a lot of people are using Zim Writer. A lot of people know Matt. And it's, I think it's a, a project of love, a project that the community has built out. Now, Matt, how can, uh, you know, Zim Writer, so it's it's where it's at now. How can we use it? Like, you know, key. I think keyword is a lot. I'm not sure if you have a presentation you wanted to show us kind of before we get started here in, into the Q&A, but, you know, um, how as an agency owner, when it comes to content, because no matter what you do, if you just do GMB, if you do website or, you know, SEO, like it, it has to do with content. How can we leverage that from somebody that's just starting, somebody that has staff, or you know somebody that's seven figures, you know, depending on where they're at, how can we leverage Zim Rider in the whole content and the whole improvement from either Scratch or an existing website? Yeah, uh, sure. and, you could know, I could I pipe in for a minute, Matt, before yeah. you get into your main uh, dissertation? Uh, this is I don't have coffee. a dissertation, but go for it. <laughs> well, uh, okay, your presentation. Uh, this is a uh, bad coffee from Tijuana. So I was wondering, you've got an unusual interface for your software, you know, with the push button thing and the little the little uh, areas where you fill in uh, uh, numbers and uh, keywords and things. How did you come up with that kind of an interface? Did you outsource that to some uh, programmer on Upwork and they came back and made that suggestion as your mm -hmm. user interface? Or did you come up with that on your own? Or are you a part-time uh, programmer who just uh, wanted to use that interface uh, come hell or high water? Could you just expound on that just for a moment or two? Sure, sure. And when you, I just want to make sure I'm understanding your question about the interface. Are you talking about like the the look and feel of it, or are you talking about like where stuff is and in the way it works, like functionally? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about well the 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 way it look and looks and feels is is kind of unique. Uh, <laughs> it, it hardly any software looks like that nowadays. It's kind of a throwback, but I enjoy it. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, and I think it's it's uh, intuitive. 
and uh, the way you've got it working is great too. So it it all seems to chime in at in, at the right uh, you know the right way, but it's it's pretty unusual to look at it when you first <laughs> open it. And I was thinking, how did you come up with that concept with that look and feel? Uh, just stick with the look and feel if you want to. Thank you, man. Sure. So, well, it, it uh, this Zim Rider in its current form is the the uh, long in the tooth MVP of an AI writer. You know, m- the, the minimum viable product. You know, uh, so the you know wrote Zim Rider all myself, and the interface. You know, it's it, if if some of you guys aren't familiar with with the interface for Zim Rider, imagine either Screaming Frogs interface. Or like a Windows 95, you know, very, uh, very functional, but very, you know, not something that you're going to want to like, you know, take on a hot date or something like that. Although, you know, maybe that's your kind of thing, you know. Um, so it's not flashy, but it gets the job done. The The reason I created it like that is because that's just what the language offered. You know, the, the language didn't offer cool gradients and cool pictures and stuff. And, you know, while I could try to uh, tweak it to get to that point, you know, who really cares? I'd rather have an interface that just gets the job done. Now, that's that's not to say I wouldn't mind it being simpler. I wouldn't mind it being a SaaS version. Uh, but with that comes a lot more considerations. You know, with- you know, Matt, could you, you mentioned the uh, language. Could you divulge what language you're using or is that a proprietary uh, It's not, function? it's not, it's not proprietary, but I'm actually, so I'm, my goal in 2024, um, I have uh, one of my, this kind of goes back to Alfredo's question. You know, one of my goals is to, I, I've created six different niche sites in the past month, and I have a couple more that I'm creating. And then one of them and possibly two will be public sites that I'll divulge and I'll have an over the shoulder and you can watch me creating them from scratch all the way from um, finding the niche, getting the keywords, creating the content, you know, doing the WordPress site, all that stuff to a, to a final product. And um, after that's done, then I'm shifting gears in my main focus for 2024 is redeveloping ZimWriter from scratch in a different language, a language that will offer um, insane possibilities. And I don't want to divulge what those are, but in uh, in a couple of years, I don't think anyone's going to be using SaaS AI writers anymore. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. So I, I have really high hopes for what's going to happen in 2024. And if we can get there, then Zoom writer will be at the cutting edge of what's, uh, what's going to be possible with content generation using AI. So I don't know what the interface will be like. <laughs> That's fine. Might Thank you. Thank you, man. A rough interface, but it's going to be, it's going to be freaking cool. I'm excited. I'm sure it will be. Incidentally, are you behind that new website creator AI? Uh, I know I signed up for a new website creator. It's all done by AI. And it had your name at the top of one of the links. Are you aware of that? I'll take a backlink any day, but no, I. I yeah, I'll, I'll try to send you that if I'm on your Facebook, uh, uh, the link. So they, they're accrediting you. Uh, in their user interface as a link. And That's it's this, cool. yeah, they are. And it's a brand new thing. And I just got notice of it uh, in my inbox. And it's supposed to do a complete creation of websites, uh, local hey. websites, and do local. all the content, do all the topical uh, authority, and do all the keywords and all the research and do you know everything from start to scratch. All you have to do is just name the niche and it does everything else. And right at the top, there's only three links at the top and your name is on one of them. So <laughs> I said, well, maybe you're behind that, but I guess not. But no, anyway. no, I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to uh, after the after the live stream. Yeah, share it with me. I'd love to um, love to hear more about it. Yeah, I'll look for it now and try to put it in the chat for you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, guys. Let's try to keep the questions to the uh, to the chat box. That way, we can keep the the flow going with here with Matt and and uh, try to get uh, everybody covered as far as their question goes. Um, 
So yeah, Matt, as far as, you know, a Zim writer now, you know, what are some of the things that like guys can do maybe that they're not utilizing it as much or, um, you know, where can, you know, an agency, where can a, a website developer or how can mm -hmm. we deploy it to clients, existing stuff to really sure. leverage and get your rankings? So it, you know, in, in this, it really depends on what kind of agency you are, who you're serving, um, so, you know, let's take, let's take local agencies, first of all, you know, agencies that serve local clients, um, we, there's a, a local SEO buffet and, and it, it doesn't upload the content to WordPress, but what it does is I call it a buffet because it creates files and the files have, um, dishes in them. And I kind of have this, this cheeky, uh, buffet, you know, language going, but there's different, there's different sections in there that allow you to pick and choose things from and then put onto your landing page. So the way I would create a, uh, local site would be, I would have, and I know some people do it a little bit differently, but I would have, you know, a page for each service with each location. So if there was like, if it was carpet cleaners, and they served Cleveland and Akron and, and Canton, Ohio, and they did carpet cleaning, they did pet urine removal, all these things. I'd have a page for each of those at each of the locations. So three services, three locations, nine pages. Some people do, do it a little bit differently. They'll have the location and then all of the services on the one page. Uh, but with with the at local SEO buffet, you can put in your locations, you can put in your services. You can, if you have like a USP for each service, like maybe you have like Stain Master three thousand. That's your your trademark, you know, USP that you put on the carpets or something like that. <laughs> it's just extra soap or something. You put the USP in there. You put what it does, and then you'll put some other like uh, some highlights about your company. Maybe you have five hundred five star reviews. You've been in business for fifteen years. You fill all that stuff out, you press a button, and then for each location and for each pay, uh, service, you'll get a page. So you put in three locations, you put in three services, you'll get nine nine files out, nine buffet files. You put in 25 services, 25 locations, you'll get 625 uh, files out. And then what you can do is you create your landing pages, like you know a little cookie cutter wireframe or something like that. Maybe you're using Elementor or some kind of page builder. You have all the spots where all the content goes, and you'll simply open up your, your page builder on one side or your you know theme on, on one side and the file on the other, and you'll just copy paste the stuff that you want. Like maybe there's specific language in one of the, the buffet files that speaks to you about that particular service in that particular location. You just pull that stuff in. Now there have been some people asking, you know, hey, we don't want to deal with, with that manual stuff. We just want to upload it automatically and have the, the page done for us. And I I'm, that's in the works, all right? But I do like the the buffet approach because everybody has their own different layout for mm -hmm. um, a a, serve, a local service page. Some people want just one paragraph about the company and that service and that location. Other people want a couple different. You know, some some people don't want highlights about the company. though, you know, five hundred five star reviews. Other people do. So I like providing all those options as opposed to just locking everybody into one format. But that is a feature that that agencies that deal with local clients can uh, can use. And you can select your, your AI model for it. So if you use like GPT 3.5 Turbo, like the latest version, which is like preview 0125, I think that was January 25th, that's when it came out. Uh, each each file is like a penny. You know, it's it's just, it's dropped, it dropped in a bucket. So you can generate all that content. You can send that to your VA and say, look, VA, put this content in the page where it goes. And, you know, they can get it all done in a day or two, depending on how many pages they have. Now, so that Matt, would be local. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, would that work? Like Brian's asking, like, as far as a book approach, if you want to do six or seven websites, um, can you kind of do that approach? Like, say you're doing local to six, seven websites. Can you do different websites? Does it have to be the same niche? You know, just different area. How is your approach with that? And hopefully, Brian, I'm representing your question uh, correctly. Yeah, so you can, when you, when you, I don't have the interface here. I'm on, I'm on my Mac, actually. But when you first open it up and you start it up, it says, that what, where is your, your service area? Where, what's your, let's see if I can pull up my, my guy right here on my, on my end. You, you what's that guy? Oh. 
And Danny, I see your question on here. I don't know if you, you'll go into that section, uh, Matt, but Danny's also asking, can you control the number of words in each of the service pages? So, okay. I, so, so he doesn't want like 2,000 uh, no, words no, for no, this. You don't, you don't get anything like that. So you, you first start the button. Yeah, yeah. You'll get, you enter your business. Yeah. So you'll say, okay, we're a cleaning service. We're a family link. We're a lawn mowing service. So that's how you put your niche in. And you put the business name. In. So for example, you put it in the cleaning brothers, you know, or cleaning roads, LLC or something like that. So you have your business type in there. You know, it's a, you know, it's a cleaning service, or law firm, whatever. You'll put your business name in and then you'll put it into five. Hey, Matt, we're here. getting a lot of crack on, on the mic oh. and feedback. Can you hear me now? now? Yeah, with a little bit of feedback. We can hear you, but it was cracking bad. All right, All right. Tell, me if I, tell me if it's coming through over there. Is it good? No, I can hear you almost. It's almost worse, Danny says. All right, hold on a second. Yeah. All right, I switched over. It probably didn't sound great, but. A lot better, though. A lot okay, better. Okay, good. Yeah, night right. and day, yeah. I'm on, my, <laughs> I'm on my Logitech webcam thing now. All right, sorry about that. All right, so you'll you'll put your business type in first, and that's cleaning service, law firm, lawn mowing service. Then you'll put in your business name, you know, the cleaning bros or, you know, legal avengers or something like that, you know. You'll put in some highlights about your business, up to five. Free quotes, upfront pricing, 15 years experience, 100% satisfaction guarantee. And then you'll put in the locations that your business serves. We serve Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Ohio, um, you know, wherever. And then can be all over the, all over, you could even do different countries if you want to. Then you'll put in services that your business offers. And you'll put in the USPs if you want to. Then there's a couple different options that you can choose at the end. You'll put in the voice that you want. Do you want like first person singular, first person plural? And you'll choose the AI model that you want. You know, GPT 3.5 is dirt cheap. Although if you want that bigger brain model, you can use GPT 4. I've actually preferred 4 Turbo over 4 because four really has that, um, that it, it like tries to sound intelligent. It uses those words that like people don't commonly use. I think turbo GPT-4 turbo kind of dials that down a little bit, but you know, you choose the model you want, you press go and then you get the results. So you can definitely choose your niche. It's really customizable. As far as the quantity, these are, I call it like, again, buffet files. So you get like little, if you go to a buffet, you know, you don't take everything at the buffet. You, you go up and you take, you know, what you want. Oh, I want a little bit of this. I want a little bit of this. And so for um, a little blurb about the company, they might have two paragraphs or three paragraphs. And you might just take that section, you know. So it's not an article. It's like a bunch of buffet dishes. I know it's like a weird concept, but it makes sense when you finally see it. So you don't take the whole thing and, and put the whole thing on your website. You just kind of take what you want. And then you can build something that's really high quality. Awesome. Awesome. So just to continue, as far as the path, we're talking a little bit about local. Um, I'm not sure if you finished that thought. I, I know we kind of interrupted the, the local part there. And then if we can uh, cover our for our national guys that are covering national SEO. Sure. So um, if you even if you're local, you know, it's I've seen this recently in the SERP and this is it's pretty crazy. I've seen for national queries. I've seen local companies showing up for them. And, you know, it could, I forget the examples that I found, but they're like, they're queries that, and, and it, it will come up in, in the company is like a, a domain rating of like five or something like that. And they're intermixed in that top 10 of the SERP with like DR 90s. And I'm like, how, you know, why are they coming up? But Google, you know, it sees that phone number, it sees that address. It knows these are local guys. It knows that they are they have no skin in the game. I think actually I was listening to one of the Authority Hacker podcasts and they give an example of this too. And it was like best toothpaste or something like that. And some some dentist office appeared for the query of best, best toothpaste, you know, because they, you know, they have no skin in the game. It's not an Amazon affiliate or something like that. So there's a, a big benefit if you're even if you're a local company to start writing these national articles. Because you could, I mean, you know, some if you're in Ohio and some guy is looking for toothpaste in California, okay, that's not going to result in a sale, but maybe that's another stream of revenue to pursue, you know. So there's 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 benefits with that approach. But whether you're local or not, 
Uh, ZimWriter makes it really easy to create um, bulk content or drip, you know, drip fed content if you want to, um, kind of however you want to do it. If you want to go low and slow, you know, slow, very methodically, you can use the SEO writer, which allows you to, to designate the exact subheadings you want. Um, you can put in your exact SEO keywords that you want. You can put in background information. Like maybe you have uh, an article that you're writing about um, specific facts for your company that no one else knows. Google doesn't know, the SERP doesn't know, and the only way to, to have the AI write about that stuff and not hallucinate is to provide that background. So you can provide that background in the SEO writer and just do one article at a time if you want to. There's a bulk writer, and the bulk writer allows you to put in up to a thousand different blog post titles, and you can customize you know, it to your heart's content, all kinds of different options, and then you can enable SERP scraping. And if these queries, I mean, I wouldn't use SERP scraping if the query has no, uh, if there's no results in the SERP, because then the AI could hallucinate, you could get bad results from that. But if if the SERP is, you know, is pretty detailed on that topic you're writing about, yeah, you check the SERP scraping box, you can enable YouTube videos, and it will bring in relevant YouTube videos into your article. And then, you know, you can figure it however you want. And then you can also add your WordPress site and it will automatically upload the articles to WordPress. You can have scheduling set and it will, you can say, okay, I want three articles a week or I want, you know, 10 articles a week or I want three articles a month or whatever it is. And they'll all upload and they'll automatically publish when the time comes. So you, you write them all, ZimWriter does it all. And then, you know, when it's, when it's finished, they've all been uploaded and they're, they'll all publish on that schedule. It even, it, it even does AI images too, but, I would recommend if you decide to go the AI image route um, to test out and we can customize, ZimWriter allows you to customize your AI image prompts. So I was one of the, the 10 sites that I'm doing, uh, it involved uh, people's skin, okay? And when you use that kind of language to describe, when ZimWriter used the language, to describe what kind of images to generate, uh, Dolly and then also Stable Diffusion were like, uh-oh, we, we can't generate images with people's skin and stuff like this. It wasn't like a risque niche or something like that, but it, you know, it didn't like that kind of stuff. So we had to go in and modify the prompt, and anybody can do this. It's not like a, it's not like a, um, an internal thing that I did. Anybody can go and modify the prompt to make it so that you're generating something that's relevant but it's not gonna get blocked by the AI image generator. So a lot of, it's almost like testing your prompts out for, for writing content. You wanna test your prompts out for writing these images too. And when you really dial it in, um, it's, it's so much better to dial everything in. And once you have it all set and you've done a couple sample articles and you really like what you're getting, yeah, then just you know pedal the metal, 100 articles, 1000 articles, whatever it is, load that site up with those that content, drip feed it for the rest of the year and charge the client, you know, I don't know, hundred bucks an article or something like that. I think you're muted. I, I'm sorry. I, that leads me into the question that I, you know, we talked about it a little bit um, when we were talking earlier. As far as AI images, um, Honey really uh, shed some light in this with the group, right? You know, does Zim Writer optimize those images or just produce them? Does it allow you to, um, you know, as far as naming them, Q and A's, uh, really, you know, a word image or, you know, kind of like what is the end result and what, how deep can you go with it? Because I know some of these prompts can be as short as a couple sentences to as long as a couple paragraphs. So in, in ZimWriter, there's a default, um, it, there's an option in the options menu called the mid-journey prompt uh, generator. And I call it mid-journey because it will actually spit out into the text file a prompt that you can take in and feed into mid-journey. But that prompt, if you've ever used mid-journey, there's like a, like a beginning part that says like, um, you know, a slash and then, uh, uh, what's, what's it start with imagine or I, I forget what it starts with. There's some stuff that starts at the beginning of the prompt. And then there's some stuff, some, some variables at the end of the prompt. That's useful if you're going to use mid journey. Otherwise, ZimWriter will take just the prompt itself, not those variables, 
and then feed that stuff into whether you choose Dolly as your AI image generator um, or, or Stable Diffusion. You can get a Stable Diffusion account, and I think it's like a 10 bucks for about 3,000 images. So it goes very, very far. And they just, Stable Diffusion just released their new, although it's not publicly available with the API yet, but it's uh, Stable Diffusion 3, and it, it rivals MidJourney. And so it's coming soon whenever they publicly release their API. But back to your question, um, what ZimWriter will do, and this is, it's kind of cool. I, I really, uh, um, I found this really cool when I, when I created it, it was very useful. Uh, ZimWriter will create a featured image. And with the featured image, you can put a placeholder in there and that's, that's called a title. All right. So you can, you can say to ZimWriter, um, here's the prompt I want you to, uh, you know, to create the image, create an, a prompt or describe an image, uh, about, you know, a dog, um, related to this concept, colon, title. And then it would have the, the title. So maybe you're in a dog niche. And so it would replace the, it would say, okay, I'm going to make some kind of a dog image. And it's going to be about, and if the title of the article was like, how to walk a dog. And it, it would replace that in the prompt. So ZimWriter creates this thing based on, creates the prompt based on the text that you've kind of described in the, in the options menu. And then it takes that and feeds it into OpenAI. And then OpenAI creates a prompt from that. So you create like the initial prompt and then OpenAI creates like the, the refined version. And that refined version is then sent to Stable Diffusion or to Dolly. So it's like a three-step process, but it allows you to kind of do what you said, which is, you know, maybe you want text. I don't recommend text in the images because they're not, Dolly 3 can do a pretty good job, but the results can be hit or miss. So I prefer to say, you know, no text in the image. I'll actually put that in my prompt. You know, make sure you say like no text in the image or something like that. Uh, or I'll, I'll say, you know, no hands or no, no feet or something like that in the image. So you can really kind of get technical and then test this stuff out to really dial in that kind of prompt you're getting. Because again, that, that skin example I was giving, I didn't want people's body parts. You know, I didn't want arms and, and you know, uh, I don't want, to, don't want to reveal the niche, but I was like, let me describe kind of abstract concepts, places where these products or these people would be when they're using this stuff or they're, um, or they're like, when we're talking about these particular titles. And that way, all of my, image came, all of my images came out without any people in them but they're still relevant. So, cause the, the only thing, the only thing that matters is when somebody lands on the page and you can verify this with heat maps, you install clarity and you're looking at how people are interacting with your page, does the AI image pass muster? And there's a couple ways to, to kind of tweak that. Some people will, you know, if, it, if the AI image is really good, you'll just have that as your featured image. You know, and I'm thinking like, you're looking at your actual WordPress post right now. You'll have your featured image and then right below it, you'll have your title and like the author and all that stuff. But if your AI image is kind of shaky, then you can just do like the, the cover where you have the image and you have some kind of a, a gradient display to kind of like make it a little darker. And then you have the, the, the title of the article right there. And so people see the title and they're not really totally paying attention to the image and it kind of hides the imperfections. That makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Now, um, I want to make sure we covered, Danny has a question here, Matt. I don't know if you see it. I like to ask Gemini to suggest, and I think it kind of goes along with what you're saying. Uh, I like asking Gemini to suggest a format for a website page about a target niche. Then I use the results to help AI to generate an article. Have you tried this approach with Zim Writer, Matt? Love it. <laughs> I love it when people ask questions and I'm like, yeah, I built that. That feature, <laughs> that feature exists right now. So there is a feature inside of ZimWriter called the Bulk Niche Generator. And so you can actually go to rankingtactics.com and you'll click on the secret training button. I call it secret training because no one clicked on it when I, when I titled it help. So I call it secret, but now nobody clicks on it anyways. So you click on the, the secret training button and you scroll down and there's, like a, there's a bunch of uh, videos in this training library. At the bottom of it, um, on the right-hand side, there's something called Bulk Niche Generator. And what it allows you to do is you can put in up to 200 
ideas and they're one to four, a uh, one to five word idea. So you can put in ADHD, you can put in journaling for organization, uh, day planner, day planner, help organize life. Okay. And then you put in all your, your different ideas and you give the job a name. So I, I gave this job a, a name called day planner. You choose your model GPT. I chose GPT for turbo and you, you wait a few minutes and for every idea that you put in, <clears throat> you'll get five different niche possibilities for that. And what you'll get from the niche possibilities, you'll get a name. So I'm just looking at my guide right here. So we put in um, organization for school. And so here are some of the examples we got. We got School Zen. That's the business name, School Zen. And the website is schoolzenlife.com. And the description of the site is School Zen is a blog that merges the concepts of minimalism and organization to create a stress-free environment for, for, for school. And then it gave you some categories, Minimal, minimalist study, decluttering tips, Zen habits, focus techniques, and well-being. And now I actually put a lot of these uh, URL, these, these website names into the beast mode on Namecheap. 90% of them are available. Mm. You know, so we got like School Zen Life, EDU Organizer Pro, Organize for Success, the efficient office.net work harmony space, the organized employee. So, you know, you want to come up with a niche because I was, I created this because I was struggling when I was coming up with some of these, um, these websites. Okay. I, you know, what can I do for another niche? I'm like, well, let me build a niche generator. So I built this niche generator, put a bunch of ideas. I'm like, Oh, Hey, this is a great niche right here. And then you can validate it with some keywords and things like that. Cause what I, what I would normally do is I'd go to Hrefs. And I'd find some keywords, like the keyword that I wanted to target was best planner for ADHD, but I don't want to go into an ADHD niche because that's like, that's your, I mean, that's, that's a health niche right there, you know, and best planner, you know, what, how do I build a site just around best planner? But then I realized like, okay, what are people that have ADHD that want to get organized? You know, what, what are they, what are they, what's their problem? What are they really dealing with? And it's like, oh yeah, life organization or organization with school or organization with work. So I put those concepts into the bulk niche generator. It gave me a bunch of ideas. And now I can build a niche around those concepts instead of just building a niche around, you know, the best day planner or something like that for ADHD. But then I can bring that concept keyword in as I'm building that topical authority out around that particular niche. Did that, did that answer, yeah. uh, was it Danny, Danny's Danny, question? I believe it was Danny. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is kind of, I think we talked about a little bit. If you can read, um, Danny says, yes, thank you. Uh, Rehan's, and he puts an actual like formula on there. I don't know if that's enough to, if you want to read Imagine. That oh, the for, oh, the formula, I see. He says, I need Matt's help to, con you want to read, read, read his question? Yeah, yeah, if you can cover that one, please. So Rehan says, I need Matt's help to convert the NLP entities, related entities to outline focus, which can be used in the bulk writer. Maybe a prompt with a magic command. I think that's a that's a good question, but it's it's really specific, I think, for this discussion. Some people are wouldn't know what um the outline focus is and things like that. So and I think yeah. Rohan, you have the inside lane from what I hear. <laughs> so reach yeah, out. Shoot me, reach your, out. shoot me your question. I'll, I'll be happy to uh, to uh, give you give you the sixty second of opinion on that. You know. So, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. So no, I was gonna I, I was gonna say in the image. I know uh, Manny had a question as far as the image that it produces. Can we add like layer the image that it gives? Like for example, a QR code or you know, right embedded within the image. So maybe multi-purpose it to a GMB pose. That would be something for a, uh... On that uh, train of thought, uh, could you embed text into the image? Because Google now is using character recognition on all images. And if you can put in the NAP, the name address and, you know, of your GMB, and phone number, and then along with your your keyword, subtly inserted into the niche, uh, into the picture, the image. Uh, they say that'll give you an extra boost because uh, it's it's sort of a hidden uh, metric for uh, ranking uh, GMBs. 
Any, you know, any that, thoughts on that? Just use, for that, you could just use Nagit. Okay. All right. I would I would imagine uh, so building that into Zim Writer would be that would be very niche. Um, I think that would be like a like a a feature to that'd be a cool feature, but it wouldn't be a high priority for me right now, just given everything else on my plate. I would imagine though, like I have there are some tools out there that if you have images right now just on your computer and that you were gonna manually do something with upload or something like that, that would definitely in bulk allow you to do exactly what you're talking about although um you'd have to have some kind of a spreadsheet with like what what profile or what text or keywords goes where um i would imagine though that there's going to be if not already a plugin out there for wordpress that would allow you to do that um i mean that's a that's a good opportunity right there hey we have a plugin that can um can use yeah. Uh, use I forget the I forget the the feature that OpenAI calls it, but OpenAI has a a feature in their API now, which actually can look at an image and tell you what it's about. You know, so I could totally imagine somebody building a, a plugin for WordPress that will say that you can say, okay, for these categories, I want you to go through and look at the images, look at the title of the article, determine some keywords, identify what the image is about. And then slap all that on as either metadata or some kind of like embedded text or something. Now, granted, that really would kind of screw up the look. I don't know if that's the look I'd want if I was like a plumber and and there was like images of some dude plunging a toilet, and at the bottom it said like a man plunging a toilet. <laughs> you know, super plumbers. <laughs> right. You know, I, I think it'd be more in the back end. Now, Danny uh, was asking, how can he? leverage them writer to build out affiliate websites um it, please share a, a strategy you uh you use to pick up products and niche like if he wants to build out affiliates what product and niche can he leverage that and then it, it seems like danny's new to sim writer so he's also asking if you can share the path like the best path for um starting out with sim writer so the and that's a that's a deep question right there. Can I share my screen? One hundred percent. All right, let's see here. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, okay. Share screen. Let's share this. Okay. Can you all see this? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, um, so if you want to get started, if you want to learn about what ZimWriter is, you go to rankingtactics.com, you click on secret training, and then I got this playlist right here, all right? You, you click on the playlist, and there's I, I, I made this because I wanted to make short to the point videos about every single feature inside it. There's, I think there might be one or two features missing, but short and to the point about every single feature, how to use the one click in the ball, how to use the SEO writer, how to rewrite blog posts in the Penny Arcade. You can go to your competitor's sitemap, take all their URLs, put them all in the Penny Arcade, and rewrite all their articles. You know, how to use a local SEO buffet, how to use mad, you know, so everything's in here. Um, that will teach you how to use ZimWriter, the, the high level, those are beginner videos. Then I have deeper dive guides on here. So affiliate, for instance, there's, well, I guess let me go back here and show you. There's a video on, um, I have that in here. Oh yeah, a video, uh, lesson 12, how to create bulk product roundups, okay? So you wanna create an affiliate site, you, you'll need Amazon products probably. Um, you're gonna need a niche, you know, you'll need to do your keyword research. You'll need info, info articles, you know, maybe a 70, 30 split, 70% info articles, 30% money articles. You don't want to, you know, I've seen a lot of sites recently with just best of, best of, best of get, get hit. All right. So you, you definitely need those info articles. So starting with the basics, how do you find a niche bulk niche generator? That's a great way to do it. I kind of walk you the process where, you know, I was in uh, Hrefs, although you can use your favorite keyword research tool, maybe it's SEMrush or something, and you'll find some kind of low competition uh, keyword with some decent volume. All right. This is pretty low competition right here. I think there was like 1.6 uh, 
1.6K volume. Okay. So I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And I looked at the uh the SERP results. I'm like, well, you know, it's pretty uh pretty maxed out, but there are some lower uh DRs in here. So, you know, maybe there's a possibility, especially if I'm not like uh a your money or life or like a, in the health niche area that I'm gonna get like dinged for it. So you put some concepts in here, you know, get some different website ideas. Then you can, you know, you find a couple you like or something like that. Maybe, maybe you like this concept and you like these categories, uh, but you don't like this domain name, but you like this domain name. So you go to like Namecheap, you put this in, see if it's available. Oftentimes it is. And you'll, you'll now have a focus for your website. You have the name for your website, or Harmony. You'll have the domain. You'll have kind of like a description that you can put in like the, the bio for your website in some different categories, all right? Then what you can do, let's go back to the help page, is you can go to the uh, or the topical authority generator. Say, okay, I have, oh, I don't have any pictures in here. You say, I have these categories, um, creativity in the workplace, flexible work arrangements, team building. You put this stuff in to the topical authority generator, and it will generate you up to a thousand different blog post ideas. It will generate you um, different categories and different blog post ideas. And then it's recommended to kind of go through there and filter. There, there could be duplicates. So this is where, you know, it's so important with, with AI, it's so easy just to create that blog, press that button, you have the stuff up there. You're like, okay, now why am I not ranking? You know, lay that good foundation. You know, you, you gotta lay that foundation. But if you lay a good foundation, you're setting yourself up for like I these six sites I've made right now, they're all done. I, I they're on drip feed for the remainder of 2024, and they're done. I, I laid a good foundation. Now I don't know what's going to happen with each one of them, all right? But I laid that good foundation. So if you lay that good foundation, all right, then you're setting yourself up to potentially win. So you can use the topical authority generator to come up with a lot of different info articles to write about. There might be some money articles in there too, but I would just you know focus on pulling extracting out of there the info articles. If you don't want to do that, maybe you're like, oh, you know what? I'd rather focus on articles that actually have keyword volume. You could do that too with, with ZimWriter. ZimWriter has a um, SEO keywords to blog post titles feature. So you can take your SEO keywords. All, so these are, I think I went to uh, Hrefs and I put in the word like SEO keywords. All right. But you can put in whatever you want. You get your list of keywords and you paste it in here and the SEO keywords to titles and you'll get blog post titles from those SEO keywords. Now there was no SERP scraping done, so we don't know if the intent is correct, but a lot of times you can glean the intent from the particular uh, keyword itself. All right, so for SEO keywords for photographers, we got three SEO keywords every photographer needs. So these are like, the niche here would probably be like photographers looking to like rank. So three SEO keywords every photographer needs to know. Top three SEO keyword strategies for photographers, okay? So you pick the one you want. So you can build all of the different articles that you want to write. Then you'll go to the bulk writer. Uh, I, I'm really proud of my AI images I use here for <laughs> all of these. I like to have fun. Um, I don't have any photos, unfortunately, of this. But you'll go to the bulk writer and you'll queue up all your info articles. And you'll, you'll do some tests first. Lay that foundation. Configure it just how you want. See if the AI images you're getting are what you want. If they're not, tweak the prompts. See if the tone of voice is what you want. If if they're not, tweak you know tweak what voice it is. You know tweak it all to get it right. Then do five more tests. You know five more title generations or you know article generations. You know do I have enough H twos? Do I need more? Do I need H threes? Configure it all. Hit that sweet spot. All right, and then write your articles. Have it, have it write those articles, and you can set it up again to auto upload. Those are all your info articles. Now you need some money articles. Right, that's where the the product roundup tool comes in. So I'm like losing myself in all these men menus over here. Um, where's the product roundup go? Bulk product roundups. So you'll come to the bulk product roundup and you'll put in, and this is cool. The bulk product roundup allows you to, and a lot of you might be interested in this. You can put in your, your I call them plural product names. So gaming keyboards, that's a plural product name. Gaming chairs, plural product name. You can put up to 50. You don't need these URLs in here, all right? Once you put up to 50, or you can just do one if you want to, um, you press a button and ZeroMeta will go out to Amazon and find all of up to 15 different product URLs for gaming keyboards. 
up to 15 different product URLs for gaming chairs. And then it will it will put the title behind each one so that you can kind of review. Because sometimes, sometimes the Amazon search is nowhere near as good as Google search. So sometimes you get, I was doing uh, gaming keyboards, for instance, I was getting some products that were key caps. Like I don't, if you're a gamer, you can get different caps that go on your keys to show you like your WASD or something like that. Um, those aren't keyboards though. I was getting some like some stuff that you blow your keyboard out with to get rid of the dust and the fingernails and things like that. Those aren't keyboards. So you can kind of filter out the stuff that you that you don't want. Once you've cleaned your list, all right, then you can just press the, the basically the go button and it will write those product roundups for you. And it even ties in like maybe maybe you don't want the image quote unquote borrowed from Amazon because that's what ZimWriter will do by default. It will borrow the image from Amazon, <laughs> download it and upload it to your website. If you don't want that, maybe you're an AAWP fan. You know, or maybe you're an AFFI.AI fan. You know, those are uh, short code uh, tools that, that you use a short code with the ASIN from Amazon. And it'll create that really pretty product box. I think it looks like, uh, let's see, looks like this. So this is like the AAWP product box. So you can actually have ZimWriter do that for you. We'll create all these product boxes for you if you use AAWP, you know, really customizable. You also don't have to use um, Amazon. You can supply your own URLs. So maybe you you have a particular site that you like, uh, Best Buy or something like that. You can provide the URLs for those products in there manually if you want to. A lot of stuff, way too much to cover in this video here, um, but it's very customizable. So I, I think that answers the question, hopefully, how to start from nothing. You know, this isn't, again, how to find your keyword. You know, that's your SEO right there. You got to take the SEO course or learn how to do SEO to find your keyword. But once you find your keyword, you know, you can find, figure out that niche, find some different articles to write about. If you want to do affiliate, you can get your money articles in there, too. And you can be done with the site in a weekend. So. Yeah, Danny says, wow, very good information. Um, so, Danny, I put this site uh, on the chat so that there's plenty um this will be recorded so you can clip this you know section of it and you know matt just gave us the one through ten steps right to get you started um and rolling here so guys i want to respect we're coming up to the 60 minute mark um we have a couple questions here matt as far as the lifetime deal does all this come with the lifetime uh deal with zim rider um if you know, you don't mind covering that? What are the different packages? Sure. And and I don't, I want to leave, and I also want to, um, I hope this is okay with you. I want to leave with something that's not ZimWriter related to, I want to provide value that's not just ZimWriter for, for all of you. So let me address your question first, and then I'll, I, I want to uh, share something with you guys too. Um, so the, I, I ended the lifetime deal January 1st. Although I've had a lot of people ask me to bring it back. And so that's been mulling over in my mind right now. Um, but I, I don't have it at the moment. Right now, what I have a, a monthly plan and a yearly plan, but I am strongly consider bringing the lifetime deal back. Um, I'll probably decide in the next couple couple weeks or something like that. Uh, but yeah, everything everything's included. I don't have tiers. I mean, I'm... I'm a dude who who does this as my side hustle, trying to make it my full time hustle. I got a family, got a kids. I have a, a Facebook moderator, but that's it. You know, I don't have employees or anything like that. So um, I don't price this thing high. It's fourteen ninety seven for the the uh, the monthly. You don't hear a lot of affiliates talking about ZimWriter because it, they don't make any money with it. <laughs> I mean, my 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 base my base commission is twenty percent, which is like two bucks a month or something like that. So you're not going to make any money. Um, uh, affiliating for, for Zim writer, unfortunately, but that's how it is. I'm having fun and that's all that matters. Um, let me, so let me share that little bit about not just leaving you with just Zim writer stuff. Okay. Uh, I want to share my screen one more time and here we go. I want to, some of you might've never heard about this. I'm, I'm actually going to give a talk this weekend. Um, at a really, I'm excited about a really cool SEO conference. And I'm gonna to touch on, on this, becoming a better prompter. Regardless of whether you use ZimWriter or not, we're all being forced to use AI. 
we have to use AI. Because if you're not using AI, you're, you're trying to haul bricks manually with the wheelbarrow while everybody else has a, a Ford pickup and loaded their bricks in the back. You know, you got to use AI, but you got to use it right. If you're just looking for a one-click solution where you press one button and you turn off your brain, you don't want that because then everybody's going to be doing that. You want to be able to use your brain because if you use your brain, you're setting yourself apart from everybody else. Because if you can't bring value and, and people um, that have more time than you and have more desire than you, um, they're going to bring more value than, than you. So yeah, you got to bring the value. You got to use your brain. So it all starts from prompting. And a lot of people, I'll see them prompt in chat GPT, absolute worst place, place to prompt. You don't want to prompt inside of chat GPT. If you want to create a repeatable prompt, a prompt that, and that's the whole goal of prompting. I mean, sometimes it's nice to, to talk to chat GPT, but if you, want to re, if you want to have something that you can scroll away in your, I don't know where you keep your prompts, maybe it's Notion or, or type desk, or maybe there's a repository that you keep your good prompts. You need to develop those prompts in a place other than ChatGPT. Because what ChatGPT does is it takes everything that you've written prior to the last conversation and feeds it back in. And so it's all, all your all your prompts are biased based on the prior conversation. That's why they say, okay, start a new, start a new chat or something like that. You know, some people will say, try to, you know, forget everything up until this point. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't really work. So the way to create an unbiased prompt that you can, uh, that's repeatable, it would be in the playground. And you go to the playground uh, platform.openai.com and it's a different payment than OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT. This is the same payment method that you'd use with ZimWriter. It's an API payment, but you pay basically pennies. But this is what it looks like. You go to the chat playground and there's a system prompt and a user prompt, all right? The, the system prompt is kind of where you put your directions and the user prompt is what you, you know, the place where you get stuff out. So you could say like, you know, write an outline for a, a book, all right, about, and then you could say uh, like title, subject of book. And we could say directions. And down here, we could say, I usually will put my prompts inside a Zim writer that are behind the scenes in a format like this. Um, this is a pretty uh, easy format for OpenAI to follow. So you'll, you'll create your prompts over here, and then you'll select your model. Don't mess with any of this stuff over here. And you'll, you'll click Submit, and you'll get your output. You might be like, you know what? I, I don't like this. This isn't what I want. I don't want introduction. I don't want conclusion down here. So you could say, um, do not do not include an introduction or a conclusion. Very simple prompting, but I, I hope you're you're understanding. So what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll delete this. All right, there's no bias now going in here. Now there's no introduction or conclusion. Sometimes you'll find out that it it, it can't follow the prompt really well under GPT 3.5 Turbo. So you switch models. You find it, it might be might do a, a very a better job under GPT-4 Turbo, or it might be doing something different under this one. All right. But the way I build prompts, and ZimWriter is all about prompts, the way I build my prompts inside of ZimWriter is I'll come into the playground, I'll put my prompt in, and I'll I'll see what output I get. And I'll do it 10 different times. Am I getting different stuff? Is different stuff appearing? Oh, you know what? I, I don't like it in this format. Let me go in here and tweak my prompt. Let me test my prompt under these different models. And once you've dialed it, in, dialed it in and you've gotten it to give you repeatable output, then you can be proud of this prompt. You can save this prompt in your, your prompt repository or whatever it is. And this prompt will then now work inside of ChatGPT. But you didn't build it in ChatGPT, you built it in the playground. I hope, I hope that made sense. I hope that was valuable to some of you guys. Yeah, that was good. Uh, one more thing about playground that's the place to sign up and pay for your chat gpt um points it's much cheaper under the playground uh menus for the api calls than it is when you pay through chat gpt the the other side 
you get it for like 0. 0.001 cents for the four turbo and it, it's it it depends it depends you know i i still pay for chat gpt they call it plus or something like that because there's sometimes it's sometimes i get lazy i'm doing my kids homework and i'm just like how do how do i do this calculus i don't remember how to do calculus tell me how to do it if i have the conversation with the ai or i, I ask for it for coding advice or something like that the, the nice thing is you're paying that flat fee and you get those 30 gpt4 generations every three hours or something like that you use uh, gpt4 inside of the playground it can add up so you know there's pluses and minuses to both uh platforms but yeah it's it's a different payment method you're paying per for your own use as opposed to getting like a an unlimited but rate limited bucket for a one price with chat gpt yeah exactly you're not paying like the 25 dollar fee for that particular um you know uh, level you're just you're just using it up as you go uh as so many points and it's zero zero one cents per per point I guess that's 1,000 words or something like that per point. But to, anyway, to get back to your prior um, uh, answer to the question, I think it was from Carlos about selecting a niche. Do you remember that one? It was about 10, 10 15 minutes ago. You went into pretty good detail on that. I, I was a little confused. W was he asking about just finding a general niche to go into, or was he trying to just find keywords and then using um, your Zim writer to zero down on the niche from the keywords, or was he just looking for some new business to go into as a kind of a general niche discovery idea? And which way was he going on that? Did, did could you did you understand that? I was kind of confused when I heard that uh, that answer. I didn't know which way he was going. Was was he looking for keywords, or was he looking for the overall niche? Could you do? Could, I, could you, I think, as far as I took it, I he was looking for how to come up with a niche. Um, maybe he had keywords, maybe he didn't. Um, Zimwriter is not going to help you with coming up with the keywords. You know, you only, I mean, you don't want to go out and, you know, create a credit card niche. I mean, that's not, that's stupid. Don't do, <laughs> you're never going to rank for credit cards. Um, you, you have to be able to find, so, some keywords that unless you're you know you're using an expired domain or buying backlinks or something like that you got to find some keywords that you're possibly going to rank for or at least have a long-term play so it, i don't know where the carlos's perspective was but it sounded like you know maybe i have keywords maybe i don't but what do i do when i have a couple of keywords how do i turn that into a site do you think it would be good I advice have, I, ha I have to i have to interrupt here because I didn't ask that question. Maybe yeah, there was, was a Carlos. Yeah, it was Danny. He and and Danny did get his answer, uh, Robert. So he, he was good. And it was okay. just how to leverage Zim Rider, um, you know, from like from the start and keeping in mind he wants to go into affiliate and picking out and how to build that out. So that's what the answer Matt gave and gave that example and resource there, which is by the way a great great resource. Uh, plenty and and uh, Danny got you know he got his answer he was good with it he was excellent and, uh, and one, in the right well one thing I, I want to add and, and I don't know if you just have to cut it off if we've gone too long or you don't no, no, care no. no the you know these six sites I've created five of them are affiliate sites but I don't have any affiliate articles on them because I just don't know I don't know if the Google gods are going to favor me or not you know so I've loaded them up with um, some of them are, are on a, a drip feed of three articles a week. Some are on five articles a day. And I'm just going to see what kind of happens. I want to give them as much uh, non-affiliate. Uh, uh, I don't want to bias them at, at, you know, having Google think, oh, hey, you know, he's he has some affiliate sites here. You know, I want to no affiliate sites. I'm just going to let them sit for a little bit and see what happens. And if I start or if I start seeing some good rankings from them, then maybe I'll squeeze in a couple different affiliate uh, articles. I think that's the new the new normal now. Use AI to create uh, a, a vault of sites, almost almost like a you know a little collection of sites. If you if all you're doing, you're not going to be 
if you, you want to get into affiliate, unless you're buying the products and creating a, a brand around you and, and getting on YouTube and have your face there and stuff like that and touching and feeling the products and creating that trust, if it's just going to be you behind a screen and nobody sees you and nobody knows you and you don't have a YouTube channel, you're just making an affiliate site, you better be making a couple affiliate sites because um, I guarantee you they're all not going to they're all not going to work in today's uh, how Google's operating today, if that makes sense. Well Will these work for lead gen sites, you know, like uh, uh, getting into the the three pack with GMBs where you're trying to gather leads from page one of Google and then having an, uh, an associated website uh, with content on it that mimics what you're trying to do on the GMB dash dashboard. Is this a good program for that as well as just uh, ranking affiliate sites, would you say it's a good idea? Are you asking about rank and rent almost? Yeah, rank and rent, um, lead lead generation sites. That's site. kind of what a few of us on, like there's a couple of us on here I know from past past uh, webinars here or sure. Zoom calls, that that's what they're into. And that's kind of my my end of the stick too. Um, well, I, and I have your, your program, by the way. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful program. I, I appreciate your hard work you've put into that. But I found this is a little thing that maybe some people would be interested in knowing from, from my endeavors in the last uh, three or four years. As far as lead gen goes, there's really only three types of niches that are, that are productive and lucrative. The, 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 the first one is in like the medical health care services like laser, tattoo, or, you know, Botox, stuff like that you know, where it's kind of a medical related thing. And then the second category would be home services, you know, like water damage or foundation repair or garage door install. And then the third niche is professional services, you know, like lawyers or immigration attorneys or, or architects and, you know, doctors and or not doctors, that would be the healthcare, but those type of things like an architect, for instance. Those are really the only three that I could think of that that have high value. You know, they're high ticket value and they're relatively, uh, you know, open on page one of Google. So if, if that helps anybody, I don't know if it does or not, but it, that's what I've been been seeing lately. That those those three categories are it for lead gen. Anything else just sort of goes into. Well, you know, sure, you can sell a gym membership for forty nine ninety five, you know, by getting people into the door to your local gym by a lead gen, but that's not going to generate you any money. What are you going to get seven or eight dollar commission out of that? You know, you're not going to you're not going to, you know, run to the bank with that. But if you're selling a, a Botox surgery, you know, that's probably thirty five hundred dollars. So if you if you if you were to charge it a $200 commission on that, that could be lucrative. And it, the same spills over into those other two niches too. So uh, that's been my outlook on, on what to do in lead gen over uh, the past two uh, or three bad, years. Bad coffee, bad coffee. I've, I've done that. I have a personal injury attorney, uh, criminal attorney and stuff like that. And home services foundation repairs, really, and uh, a brain surgery guy. And <laughs> That's the great. other people, the other people, uh, they were starting their own. They were, they were just starting. I found that home services, doctors, and attorneys creates the best value. Uh, these yeah. guys, people starting out can't really afford and that's the thing yeah there's all high right, demand all right, there's high demand alfredo for those niches everybody needs an attorney at least once or twice in their life you know you never know what you, you could happen Absolutely. everybody needs a dentist once or twice in their life uh everybody might get a leaky roof once or twice in their life and uh everybody that's living in Beverly Hills might want some Botox surgery. So we don't get a big call for that down here in Tijuana, but what we do get is immigration attorney services in Tijuana because there's 30,000 people trying to get across the wall down here. 
and they're they're all trying to get uh, you know uh, amnesty uh, uh, petitions filed with the with the immigration service here at, the, at our consulate. Yeah, so, but, uh, Robert, if I can interrupt real quick, we're gonna go ahead and close this up and call it real quick, Matt. I always end the uh, GMB pros with this one question, and it's what's a fun fact about Matt? that nobody knows nobody knows um i four years ago i got we bought some land five five years ago and then four years ago i got some software that did a that took the google map of my land and allowed me to uh, virtually digitally plant as many trees as I want. So I, I planted about 90 trees and then I simulated the growth over 20 years and whatnot. And I looked at it in the fall and in the spring and the winter and all this stuff. I did the 3D walkthrough and I said, yep, this is what I want. And so the, I, I contacted Arbor Day and they sent me the trees and I planted them all. And so now hopefully in 10 years, if I'm still around, we'll have an arboretum in the backyard. So that's, <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's my de-stressor. <laughs> that's why Matt right there you're the man that's why a lot of people I, I haven't found anybody say anything negative and like I said when I went out to you know hey, get some prompts they're like oh yeah Matt's a nice guy we talk all the time I can see why it really comes across and this is like a perfect example when I talk about operating your gift I love it I love it love it love it um appreciate you matt I, I thank you guys show support to matt those that are catching the replays if you're not already follow him on youtube reach out to him on facebook show him uh the love and support of gmb pros uh i appreciate you matt i thank you for coming on here and showing guys matt showed us some great value as far as prompts uh you know gave us some great resources within his um, platform that I think we should leverage and be able to apply it like right away, right? So that's what we're about. Matthew, I appreciate you. With that being said, guys, much love, much success, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. The pleasure. See you all later.